Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. O'Shea Jackson Jr. Yeah, what's going on? Welcome back, sir. Thank you for having me I once thought, again. I thought you was tired of Hollywood. I thought you I know. saw something one day you was venting saying you was tired of Hollywood. Well, yeah, you get tired of it every day, but mm-hmm. you okay. know, as long as the checks come in, they seem to energize you right back up. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we seen you, you were here promoting Den of Thieves. Yes. And it was a, it was a good flick. Yeah, thank you. It was a good flick. I appreciate took that. The, took the ending kind of from he a little heatish. Sounds surprised that he thinks that. Yeah. A little heatish. No, no, I'm just glad because you never know. You yeah, know, yeah, you, yeah. you just do the work and hope for the best. And so the more people will tell you you like it, you know, the more work you get. But, yeah, with Dinner Thieves, it was like they wanted to heat. You Unusual suspects had a baby. Right. And that's us. Right. And I'm just glad I get to be... Kaiser O'Shea. <laughs> Kaiser Sose. No. Kaiser O'Shea. Oh, O'Shea. Oh, O'Shea. Oh, okay. <laughs> you Andy, the only one, yeah, you was the only one alive That's in that movie. Up. Everybody else died. Well, <laughs> yeah. thanks in case people didn't see it. Now they don't have to. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Please don't <laughs> see it. Because that means I get another one. <laughs> so what happens when you get tired of Hollywood and you start complaining? Who reels you back in? Um, Just really just the, the you know, this is my job. Yeah. My my first goal was to be a writer. Uh, You know, that's the that's my first love but it was straight out of Compton and and everything that I had to put into that movie, I developed skill for acting. Mm-hmm. And so after that, it was just like, this is our job now and you got to you gotta take the punches. I always wanted to be on the other side of the camera because mm-hmm. I saw what it did as far as, you know, my dad. My dad was never the dad to be able to take me to the mall all the time. You know, it's just going to be chaotic. We can't go to Six Flags all the time without it being a, a planned thing. And I wanted to take and have whatever little privacy I did have, but that's out the window now. Yeah. You know, now we just got to work, and sometimes you just got to cope with that. That's yeah. interesting. Did that affect you as a child? For sure. Yeah. You know, it's just you got to you gotta have a different type mindset. You, you're strategizing every which way that you move. You know, even the people that you associate yourself with as a – as a young kid, like, you know, it, it might be cool at first, you know, mm-hmm. to be that guy or to just have that recognition for, you know, who your father is. But you, you it just adds snakes to your garden. You can't you know? just invite yeah, anybody yeah. over the house. Yeah, you know, you just can't. And, and to have that that way of thinking, to, to strategize early, it does, you know, mess with you. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's a gift and a curse. But as long as you just... Keep the blessing part of it, you know, alive in your head. You'll be all right. Did you ever have a bad experience? Like you brought somebody over and they stole like your pop's Raiders cap or something? Man, like I had, I had <laughs> so a, you got uh, a bunch of Raider caps. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got a few, but I had a, uh, a homie by the name of Leonard Pearl. Yeah, I put you on blast. Leonard. He uh, Leonard Pearl. He took my Bape watch for, <laughs> I had when I was fifteen. He go give it to me. He go give it back to me on my twenty first birthday. Like, what? yo, I Come took on, this from man. you, man. And just you just been cool with me for so long that I just feel bad about it. And I'm like, he's still. <laughs> <laughs> It's been six years. <laughs> you you had my watch for six years. Kept it in good condition, so you was rocking it. Like, wow, man, we not cool no more. So and, like, and that's Bape just, ain't even popping no yeah, more. Like, what you want me to do with well, this? Bape, Bape is still popping, but did we like, listen to watch or no? No, I mean, yeah. Like, after, you just think like, damn, you know, you where'd just gotta chalk it? it up. Like, yeah. where did I put it? Right. Did you and forgive Leonard? him? So you don't forgive him. No. Oh, so y'all stop being friends no, after, after that? After that, like, no. Nah, he came out. He was being honest. He was like, "Yo, I took this. My bad." And he was like, F "That's that. cool. I'm happy for you. I'm glad you can sleep better at night." <laughs> nah, can't hey. do it, man. Can't do it. He thinking to himself, "I shouldn't have told him." I know, I yeah, yeah, the watch. Hey, you know what? God see you. God see you, man. <laughs> God see you. I like how you've not allowed yourself to be typecasted or stuck in one role. Is that is that intentional? Yeah. You know, they uh, I really just feel personally, you know, they they might say that I'm wrong, but I doubt that. There's just certain roles they just not gonna give my pops. You know, they just not gonna mm. give it to him because he's ice cube. And, you know, I just from, you know, being his son. It's just stuff that I, you know, I've picked up on or I, I see or I kind of feel and I take that personal. And so what I look at it as my father in music is untouchable. His mm-hmm. legacy, you know, you, that's nothing that you should try to outdo. It's mm-hmm. just not going to happen. But I feel that he he's being held back as far as in films with them not offering him certain roles. So it's my job to take our family's name 
to different heights as far as cinema goes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not giving them the opportunity to say that I could do one thing. Because after Straight Outta Compton, there was a bunch of, well, of course he could play his dad. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah, he's been around him his whole life. Of course he got it. And I had to audition for two years. Like, I had to put in work to get to where I'm at. So it's to show that, you know, they, they can't put me in one thing. They can't just have me be the same dude in every movie and it's to show my versatility to show my range and to show that I'm here to stay I think the difference between you and your dad is that you smile more yeah that's for you're sure you're funny yeah, yeah you know that. what I'm saying like yeah. Cube is always yeah that's that straight face you know what I'm saying cold gang glasses how many different roles can he play with the straight face on look that's, that's because he's Ice Cube yeah. you know and Ice Cube Ain't changed for nobody, yeah. you know. So that's just how it is. So I got to take the O'Shea name and you know. Now, how, yeah, now you talk about yeah, his dad doesn't smile. How was that as a, as a as a a child? But your dad oh. just never smiled. Are you always in trouble? No, he uh he laugh a lot at the house. Yeah, he you know jokes there. He he would. My dad would do stuff <laughs> when when we was like little kids. He would like. Cut off the light, cut off the power to the house. So like when we go to turn on the lights, like the lights don't work, chases around and stuff. Like he love, like he loves having fun with us. That like, like fun. That was fun. That look, as a kid, like as a kid, like a kid you know it's just your dad. Who didn't so pay it's the just bill. like you know, it's a, it's a great time. But he he loves you know his family, and mm -hmm. so he we get the real side of him, mm -hmm. and you know it's just so much so much BS he had to deal with growing up. And once he got into the business that everybody get, you know, everything everyone says gets taken yeah. with a grain of salt. And, you know, that's how, it got him this far. Right. You know, ain't nobody about to change his mind about that. Got you. And he can't let go of that. He, he, I, you know, it wouldn't be him if he did. What, what genre do you find the most challenging? To, to do. Uh, you know, challenging. I, I'll accept all challenges, but as you know, dramatic roles they they are a little bit more draining. Uh, you could be having a great day, and you got to force yourself to have a bad one. You know, yeah, you got to yeah, yeah. whatever the scene calls for. You have to mentally put yourself in that space, and that's drawn from whatever in your life got you there, mm. wherever your character is, and you know, to call on that thirteen. 18 times in one day in a couple of hours that's real draining you know it's a it's a it takes a lot and you really feel like you've been exercising the whole day like you you know you feel exhausted comedy was this was so refreshing for me because long shot yeah long shot they want you to improv they want you to have fun they want that light mm -hmm. energy and it's all about bouncing off people it's all about having chemistry with with the cast Seth and, and Charlize made me feel welcome from day one. Mm -hmm. And uh, our director, Jonathan, super approachable. And this early in my career is dope to have people that want you to shine. And, uh, you know, I feel like I kill it in this. I saw that trailer before Endgame. And you said you told Essence that your daughter was why you signed on the long shot. Well, she's she's my, not as far as signing on the long shot, mm -hmm. but that's my motivation for Everything thus far. Well, what's like, Long Shot about? For people that don't know, they didn't see the trailer. It's about uh, a guy who works for a, a woman that's running for president. Let us see I was asking it. him. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> since you're in the movie, you looked at me. No, yeah. I mean, I was, you know, everybody in this room. You. Listen, everybody in this room loves to answer people's questions. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's the weirdest see. thing in the world. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Long Shot is about Seth Rogen, who plays Fred Flarsky. He is a political journalist, and he's down on his luck. He comes see me, Lance. And uh, I play his best friend. I tell him, you know, we got to go out to this party. We go to a party where Boys to Men is at. It's chilling. Everything's oh, that popping. Was hilarious. And then he looks and sees his old babysitter. Mm -hmm. And his old babysitter just happens to be the Secretary of State, Charlotte Field, played by Charlize Theron, and she's running for the presidency. So he's in love. I'm like, we got to bag this, and chaos ensues. Mm -hmm. I love the part when uh, the dude from Boys to Men said, "Crack it down." Yeah, I just yeah. like to hear crack on a on a wide scale. Like yeah, that. they let him let him do that a couple times. <laughs> you love that. <laughs> now, do you feel a responsibility to seek out roles that display representation for women because of your daughter? Uh, for sure. Okay. You know, you definitely it's definitely around that time. You know, it's it's, it's Everybody could see, you know, stars everywhere you just seem to be having daughters. It's like a wave coming in. I got three. And, it, you know, it's uh, it's it's about women empowerment right now. And it's important for us as men to, to lift our ladies and to make sure that they are reaching the the heights that they want. This is It's a rhetoric and, and dialogue out right now that powerful men don't want powerful women. But if I'm 
Superman? Do I want Lois Lane or do I want Wonder Woman? Right. So it's just it just doesn't it's make sense. It's interesting because I really felt like a lot of people, whether or not they'll admit it, there's a, still a prejudice against women. Where when Hillary Clinton was running for president, part of it was the fact that she was a woman, yeah. and people can't see a woman as president, and they always look at it like, well. Just the other day, I heard somebody was looking for a job, right? Mm-hmm. And she was qualified, but they were like, but she has a child, and will she be able to travel? <laughs> and you don't hear that when somebody has a, a man right. has a child. They don't say, well, is he going to be able to still do his job the way he should because he has a child? You hear that still when it comes to women. But I am happy to see a lot more representation for women in politics. Yeah, it definitely, you know, a leader is born. Like That's, that's just how it is. And if you check out all the boxes that that are needed to lead the country, then you should be able to lead the country, male or female. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on, let's be for real. Women are the CEOs of our lives. Your mother, <laughs> yeah. your grandmother, exactly. you know, your wife, your, your your baby mother, like, come on. They run tight, it's a, it's a tight ranch ship when you are a, a mama's boy like myself, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's just how it is, you know? How old is your child? She'll be two in August. Oh, August you got four. got? Leo. You got got or you? No, 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 no. It's just, she, he, he asked, she asking me some, some rap shit, some fuck shit. <laughs> but no, no, no. I'm in a good position. Okay, I'm happy okay. right now in my life, and you know that's Jordan Rain is the best thing I got going. Gotcha. And is she just making me, you know, crank it up to Super Saiyan mode? Did you get? Did you uh, have a moment where you was just like in, enjoying the fruits of your Hollywood labor? Um, no. Basically, just fucking everything because you was popping. No, 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 not at all. The you know the person that I I have her with, I've known since I was fifteen years old. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's definitely my blessing that I got going right now because there are times in this business, man, when you could put a foot in the ass of somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just it's it, it gets hard out there. And when I play with my daughter, when I you know when I'm watching. Peppa Pig, shout out to Peppa Pig. <laughs> you know, uh, doing it strong with Paw Patrol. You know, when we when I'm we sitting and and just chilling, like I'm I'm in a bubble and I, I get to go on a, a mini vacation and I, I get to like you know it's it gives it's you my stability. Everything. Yeah, so focus I, shows you what's important. So now I'm, I'm just you know waiting for her to get old enough to hop on this PlayStation and then we could just bond completely. <laughs> on PlayStation? Yeah, I, mean, I need my daughter to get, No, I need her, yeah. I need <laughs> a partner on the sticks and I'm, I'm happy about this. Don't rush that. it. My no. daughter three and she loves it and it's the most annoying thing in the world. Because you got <laughs> no. you got to teach her and I'm, I'm trying nah, to get it in. Nah, like, you're about to get worked. That's how, that's how my pops <laughs> raised me with Madden. Mm-hmm. I had no chance. So like, nah, I'm raising wow. a Khaleesi. She got to be strong with it. I see you haven't been on social media much either. Is there a reason why you haven't been yeah. wanting to post? Uh, Instagram for show because I I lost my password. But you know they just ain't <laughs> they, just, you can't get your yeah, they just ain't hooked me up. You know I, I just gotta I'm get sure a little bit more your... famous for people to answer me. Uh, but it's uh you know that's just how it is. And it, it, as far as my daughter, like nah, she got to choose. Like like I said earlier, it's hard growing up. You know, when you have that over you, when you got that that famous pops and, and people just want to be around you for that, and it's just unsafe. Like, I, I, I would just rather her be able to choose that before I have any responsibility of throwing her in any mm-hmm. kind of light because it it changes how you got to grow up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that shit is weak. It's, it's, it's a major blessing, and what you do with it and how you grow with it is all on you, but, like, you know, she go have some hard days. It's just how it is. You know, with the passing of, of Nipsey, how, how did that affect you, you being from L.A. and even with you having a daughter? With Nip, it's, you know, that was, it was such a shock. It was so out of nowhere. Right. I, I I couldn't believe it. I never, I was too young for, you know, Pac and Biggie and, you know, I, I'd never been shook so much by a, an artist passing the way Nipsey shook me. And it just... When you see somebody doing nothing but good, mm-hmm. we get we get rappers in the news for the wrong reasons all the time. Right. You know, it's just we got a lot of knuckleheads in our genre, you know. Plenty and, of people that you see and be like, somebody gonna get him if you don't start acting. Yeah, like it's shit. just like people you look at, and it's you know, it's just how it is. And and I never heard nothing bad about Nipsey. Never seen him in a negative light. You know, I, I got to meet him one time after. No, actually, right before Straight Outta Compton came out, Dre had let him see it, and you know he was telling me how he felt about the movie and everything. But it just sucks when somebody who's doing such positive thing, you know, positivity, actually helping people mm-hmm. grow selflessly. You know, nobody's asking him to do this. 
and he's willing to go there and you still get hated on enough right. that somebody got to take you away right. and when your life story become a what if like you know it's it's just the weakest shit and it's up to everybody who respects Nipsey and who appreciates Nipsey to make sure that the marathon continues you know, I've only known Michael Jackson to have his service in Staples Center. Right. So for for rap to be in there, that talk about how how important he was to the city. You know, L.A. is not a war zone right now. Everybody, don't be scared of L.A. But like, L.A. was on some bullshit that day. Mm -hmm. I um I, I I feel like the I feel like the energy of Nipsey. They said that the energy of L.A. changed after Nipsey passed. Is that true? Yeah, it's like, you know, people. It's just his spirit. I would say his spirit is still strong and everybody wants to make sure, you know, things, that something comes from mm -hmm. this, you know? Mm -hmm. For it to just, it can't just die down and just be nothing and then we forget what he was doing, forget, you know, the bigger picture of everything. So I just feel that everybody's scrambling, to, trying to find out, you know, where we go from here, what's the right thing to do. And most of it has led to, People coming together, people, you know, talking about building, you know, true, true leadership within our city. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hate that it took this, but you need that match to, to light that fire. So, you know, here we go. Did you have any conversations with your pops about even how he came up? Because he stayed, I guess he knew how to play, play, play it to where he didn't have to be in the hood and something like yeah. that couldn't happen. So did you it's, have any? It's all right to provide yeah. and without having to be in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all, it's all right. Mm -hmm. As long as you are there showing your face, when your people ask for you to speak, you speak to them, you, 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 you give them advice, you give them mm -hmm. the game to get out. You're, you're doing things to that lead to change. It's all right if you're not there. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's just... You can't put yourself in danger. You can't put yourself in harm's risk trying to help others. You know, if a, if a bum asks me for five dollars and I only have five dollars, like I need this to eat to survive, mm -hmm. I can't harm myself trying to help others. It, you know, it, it just and it sucks that we even live in a time where you got to be at home in your yeah, own yeah, neighborhood yeah. and you think that that's somewhat right. harmful. Mm -hmm. It's just how it is. You know, you can't. You got to be smart about it. And I, I wish Nipsey was still here. How did that affect you? Because you've never had to play the hood. No, never. Yeah. But it's just having, it's it's having knowledge of your surroundings always, mm -hmm. no matter what. You know, any new environment, you better look around and see what's going on. That's just how it is. And you know, just the love for your people and the knowledge of what your people are are, are going through in cities mm -hmm. all over. You know, not just in the U.S. but everywhere. And that knowledge of self and that love of self will, it makes you want to give others opportunities. There's so many people that got mad talent, like you just got a talent, and don't have that door open. They don't have that opportunity because of whatever circumstance. And most people don't even know what they're good at because they, they're so good at it that it come easy to mm -hmm. them. So they mm -hmm. think like, that that's nothing, you know? But that's a real talent. And mm -hmm. nobody's gonna know that until somebody show them that. And most of us, we don't get shown that. We get shown rap uh, or singing and sports. You know, that's what we get mm -hmm. shown. But the, the stuff that we really good at, it comes so easy that we don't pay attention to it. And so like, that's a, I want to get to a position where I can do that for my people, for for others who don't get it. Speaking but show them that there's other career options other than rap and entertainment? Yeah, to show okay. them that there's other avenues where your mind can flourish. You know, right. you you it's just, it can't just be only two ways. Speaking, I of, agree with um, you. speaking of sports, I was going to say, are you excited about LeBron coming yeah, to the Lakers? I love that. For what? Know, what you talking about? <laughs> Acting like if he didn't have that Knicks jersey on, you would be doing backflips. I'm not a Knicks fan either. But <laughs> yeah, Knicks jerseys for me. So, and, so um, what is so? <laughs> they, they don't have a, a professional team in in South Carolina. So, but that's not the point. Kind of the, the, the point is, LeBron, y'all not y'all didn't even make the playoffs. That's cool. I kn <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> the, listen. Everybody knew Golden State was gonna win this year. Yeah, correct. So this year is whatever. It's a throwaway oh, year. Not, not, we don't film, know yet. Your, film your barbershop show. Space Jam 2, get that in first year. That's fine. But I expect free agent. Really? I expect work. Really? I expect a ring by the third year. You know LeBron's not getting no younger. 
Look, look, let you me know, tell none you. Of the top free agents, none of the salt, top free salt, agents are salt, even salt, talking about LA salt, Lakers. Salt. They're talking about going to the Clippers. Please. Think about that. Please. I'll think about it. <laughs> that don't mean it's going to happen. <laughs> no, nah, man. Because the Knicks are getting Zion and Kevin Durant. You don't know. Oh, yeah. Kyrie yeah, Irving. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Frozen envelope. Delusion. Yeah. Wow. No, but respect to him. You ain't even got a team. You're just, <laughs> <laughs> just over here hating the hate. No. I, I, listen, I like basketball. I like players. I like basketball. Yeah, I like players. <laughs> I like players. I don't have a, a particular hop team. out. Cop out, bro. You got to choose a side and ride with it. Nah. Damn. He's also a Cowboys fan, But what do you too. think? Definitely a Cowboys fan. Uh, you know, so it's kind of... Ew. <laughs> yeah. it's kind of, you know, said, ew, uh, ew. Yeah, Gross. Yeah, pretty much. What do you think the Lakers needs? Somebody with Jesus. a K in their name. You know, Clay, Kyrie, Kawhi, Kevin, any of them. He thought get about down. that. He thought about yeah, that. Get, but... Anybody, get down here and be ready to work. You know, uh, you're not coming down here to just look nice. You know, we need to get some chips and, you know, the clipper noise that can. Just subside, you know. I'm happy for y'all. I'm happy for Golden State. I love that all these single digit championship teams are getting their shine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I got 16 of them. Thanks. So you know, uh, everybody just get your shine while the, <laughs> while the king is down. But yeah, we'll be back. We'll be back. We're the Lakers. We're the logo. Don't get me started. You know, actually, if the Lakers would just be patient, they'd be all right. Yeah. Think about all the talent they traded away: D'Angelo Russell, Boo. Brandon Ingram. You keep, no, we got Brandon. Not still. Brandon Ingram. Um, um, Julius, Julius Randle. Julius Randle. Yeah, Julius. Why you said boo with D'Angelo yeah, Russell? Yeah, why you boo with D'Angelo Russell? He's balling out. He's not against. with them no more. Boo. He's balling out. Yeah, he's a you know respect, out. respect. Okay. You don't you don't become the the highest scoring freshman in Ohio State history for no reason. Right. He a hooper, but like, what am I do now? Boo! But I'm saying, you know, Laker, I gotta boo you. Imagine yeah. if they kept those two with that little young core they got now. Just be patient. Look, That's man, all. Be They'd patient. Is all that changed once we got LeBron. Once we got LeBron, it's like we need to win now, right now. All that, let him grow, let Luke be the coach, and let him form the young. Now, get him out. You got to have get the same out. patience <laughs> that LeBron had with his hairline. He didn't rush it. He didn't go grab a wig. He just waited, waited, and it came back. We need a headband real quick. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I got faith in LeBron James. Every time he wasn't on the Lakers and I hated on him, he seemed to succeed. Mm -hmm. So it, it should, you know, it should just work out. Once he put on the golden armor, you a Laker in my book. You, yeah, we had this debate the other day. I was saying that Le it's never been a time where LeBron has uh, dominated the league. What? Mm -mm. He's the I believe that. He's the nominated conferences. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. The Eastern Conference is a real thing. Yeah. You know who did dominate the league? Kobe. Kobe Bryant. Absolutely. <laughs> Michael Jordan. That's, I, you I, know, this dude right that's here. That's all I was trying to explain right people. here, man. He's definitely not a good guy. <laughs> definitely not a good guy. He's, he's a good guy. Y'all just full of hate. Do you and LeBron have a relationship with each other though? Like, do you know him? Uh, he have played you... for the Lakers, and I love <laughs> him for it. Like, I don't, I don't know him. Uh, okay. I would be down to be in Space Jam too. It's, it's a hella of rumor. <laughs> you know, it's it's a hella rumor out right now that I'm in Space Jam too. That's absolutely not true. I didn't see that rumor. Yeah, uh, it's because non-Laker fans were reading my Twitter, <laughs> and he said he was missing a game because of a groin injury. And I read that as getting ready for Space Jam too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got on Twitter because I missed a radio show, and I said that I had a groin injury because I was rested for Space Jam too. Mm. Non-Laker fans was like, ooh. He's going to be on. in Space Jam, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm not in it unless LeBron James want me to. <laughs> they didn't get the joke, basically. <laughs> they didn't yeah, 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 get it. <laughs> so, so what's next for you besides Space Jam 2? <laughs> you know, I got <laughs> I got Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know if y'all big Godzilla fans, but I am. Yeah, I like that. I like what they're doing with that whole universe. Oh, it's... Oh, yeah. I'm so mad I'm not in the next one, but... It's dope. It's it's the best one I've ever seen. Mike Doherty, the director, made sure that it was right. He's also a co-screenwriter on it. And they, they gave a nerd the keys to the car. Mm. And I respect that, mm -hmm. you know, because it's so much, so many of our, our things get, get passed on to people who don't even know the material. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, respect to Mike Doherty. It's the perfect Godzilla film at me. What happened to OMG? Shit, you would tell me. I, I lost his number. <laughs> no, you know, once I once I started to become a, a you know, an actor. A thespian. Yeah, you know, a thespian. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you know, it's just like I said, they typecast you once you say some lyrics that they can misconstrued or 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 you know, whatever. So I just decided to just avoid that lane and to focus everything on acting. But I'm still attached to music. Mm -hmm. I produce, I make, you know, I make beats. My brother is 
getting Lynch Mob back up and running. We got some dope artists coming. And yeah, I'm making dope connections. More famous you get, more people number you get in your phone. So I'm, I'm you know, I might, might have a nice compilation album for y'all soon. That's interesting because you said that your father uh, still gets, they keep him in certain roles. You think rap had something to do with that as well? Everybody's scared of my dad. Yeah. So you're going to play the scary guy all <laughs> the time. And he's so down for that. He's with yeah. that, you know, so that's all good. But, like, there are things, like, there was a some buzz going around of people who wanted my dad to play Green Lantern back in the day. Get the fuck out of here. I yeah, heard you, that Yeah, dude, you can look it up, my man. What was what was <laughs> homie's name? Si, uh, Jay and Silent Bob. I can't think. Kevin Kevin Smith. Yeah, he was, he was behind it. Like, it. It was just like... Something that I thought was, you know, could they really ever possibly do that? Mm -hmm. And I just don't think they would. So I don't like that. Yeah. I don't I don't dig that. I, I think that's whack. So I want it all. I need that. You know, I, I need to have us in them circles, in that talk, because I, you know, I can't help but feel disrespected. That's just yeah. like my mentality. Do you have any screenplays that you have ready to go? Almost ready? Uh, Yeah, I got a, you know, I got a crazy movie about the LAPD back in the back in the day it's a it's a historic piece and then uh, I'm trying to get an anime off the ground uh, I feel like a lot of black people are in the anime and we really only have boondocks afro samurai and black dynamite like that was like marketed for us so I, I definitely want to do something dope with that and uh well, the boondocks amazing man man timeless <laughs> Lord have like mercy. ugh I love that show. I still watch it. Shout out to Hulu. And, uh, you know, it's just some passion projects, things that I feel like people aren't paying attention to. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to make some moves on them. And I want to be the dude to get video game movies right. I got to be the guy to get video game movies right. I feel like there's a there's a bunch of them that are just cash grabs, and that's disrespectful, you know. Like and which ones? Like, I've wanted, when you hear... A new Tomb Raider. All right, all right, Tomb Raider. That's dope, that's mm -hmm. dope. And then they got uh, Alicia Vikander, who's like, she's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like they sh they did her short, you know? I feel like that movie should have been crazy. Uh, Super Mario Brothers damn near made Nintendo not want to do movies no more. Right. Like, you know, right. the only thing they put out is Pokemon. Yeah. You know, so there's like, they're, they're, they're scared to touch it, but they know it makes money. They... They know it's a story behind it, so they just make a movie based off that story, and it just get we just get so short as as gamers, and I you know I'm tired of that too. I think they could do them better now, only because of the way the the, the the graphics are, special effects and stuff are in movies. Yeah, but even then, you got to convince them that they should spend X amount of money on mm -hmm. it, and you're, we're gonna need this to shoot these scenes. And if they ain't got no appreciation for the game or its lore, they're gonna be like, man, because yeah, they should do a Fortnite movie. Uh, Man, if they, they can figure that out, they, they, they have a, a all -star oh, cast. Uh, they're about to do a, a, a Halo TV series, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, and the homie um, Pablo Schreiber from Den of Thieves mm -hmm. is about to be Master Chief. So, like, wow. you know, it's 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 there, but they're not. I just feel like they're not hitting the mark. What scares you the most about raising a daughter? Uh, the fact that it's a daughter. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know what it's like to grow up as a young lady. I'm gonna mm -hmm. be going to my mom for hella advice you know mm -hmm. and uh just of the world that we in today i always think you know thank god I, I was born in the time frame i was born in but at the same time it's scary you mm -hmm. know it's some weak shit out in the so world much right access now. to everything now too you could find go online have a phone and you know have social media people contacting you yeah it, it can the be video games it's just all all new windows of them being able to get to her mm -hmm. yep. or, or it's mm -hmm. just new things in the world that she's going to have to deal with you know politically if mm -hmm. anything were to go down and it's just it's a it's a scary time and so you know you you hope for the best there's been scary times way before us mm -hmm. there's scary times going to happen way after us it's just you know the, i guess the normal things of of a new parent of just all the things she's going to have to deal with whose ass i'm going to have to whoop at her school and like <laughs> you know just all the 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 microaggressions I'm gonna have to put on the PTA staff. Word. <laughs> PTA staff. What kind of grandfather is Ice Cube? Oh, man, he 
First of all, my baby is the first grandbaby. She wow. is the one to lead us into the next generation. <laughs> the child. Yes. So you know, when my siblings have babies, she will be the big cousin, <laughs> you know, and then I love that. And he's mush. He loves he's it. Mush, you man. know. His uh she yell at him when his phone rang. She don't like when he be on his phone. He be mm-hmm. on his phone a lot, busy man. She be like, No, granddad. Like, you know, <laughs> just real hard with it. And she got the frown. She got the mm-hmm. The scowl, so I love it. You know, he loves it. He loved getting yelled at, you know, getting fed mushy food. It's all good. It's all gravy. That's are you are you paying attention to the presidential candidates that are going run in twenty twenty? Uh, no. Right now, honestly, my you know, I just been having my head down because I got a I got two films that I'm promoting right now with Godzilla and Longshot, and then Just Mercy with Michael B, Jamie Fox, and Brie Larson is going to be coming up right after that. But you know. I'm not about to be one of these people that just cross their fingers and hope for the best. Yeah, you know, yeah, once yeah. I get time, it's about sitting down and making sure that you have somewhat to say of where your future go. All right. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. Man, thank y'all. And good luck on the movies. I appreciate y'all. And I, I really don't hope that your Lakers do anything because I need my Knicks to. That's they cool. They, they won't. I hope uh, that y'all stay in mediocrity because <laughs> Michael Rappaport <laughs> is the homie, but he be tripping. And uh, yeah, go Lakers. Uh, I hate the Celtics. Fuck the Celtics and the Patriots. Damn. Celtics you, might be in the finals I, this year. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now what, what? Long Shot May 3rd. My long Shot May 3rd. Go see it. You got to see it in theaters. The soundtrack is bumping. Your boy is in it. What the hell else do you need? When you see me in the street, holler at you, man. All right. It's O'Shea Jackson Jr. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.